How do you swing trade a stock successfully? What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions and I'm actually going to be covering what led to my success on my PTON uh, swing trade and why it is that it played out so well. A lot of you guys know I actually uploaded and feel free to check it out. Uh, I uploaded a video on uh, Monday of last week, so four days ago. Um, and the really cool thing about this video is that it talks about AMC, right? AMC had a really big week. Uh, obviously, I'm aggressively trading AMC, but that's day trading. I know day trading is not for everyone. I did talk about a potential swing trade, and that was PTON. PTON, I want you guys to know everything that I know and what led up to this, you know, uh, my intention of why I found it to be so attractive. And if you have any questions uh, at the end of this video, please make sure you comment them down below. So PT1 tends to do pretty well, right? Uh, PT1 on the day chart, just so you guys can see, uh, has normally traded above $100 a share, anywhere from 100 to highs of around 130. Yeah, it has hit highs of 167, all of that good stuff. This was during the pandemic. Uh, PT1 or Peloton was a company, again, their at-home workout uh, devices or machines, uh, and they did very, very well during pandemic conditions. So I don't really like to compare the demand of a pandemic to where we're at now, right? Because they're not going to be as high of a demand as they were back then. Uh, so because of that, I take a more realistic resistance level to be right around like the 125, 130 general area, a more common or, you know, more frequent support right around $100 or $90. And that's why Peloton, I've been, I've been, like been very familiar with Peloton ever since its original pullback uh, that it hit highs of above 130 and then it pulled on back again to $100. I, I constantly follow up with Peloton. It's just one of those stocks for me. So Peloton to me is not a lower cap stock. It's not a penny stock. It's not a hyped up stock. It's a good quality company that did very well during pandemic conditions and that tends to trade around 100 to about $130 a share. So as it reported earnings, it acted as a negative catalyst, as you can see. It had a sudden drop and it consistently sold off. One of the things that we love to share within our YouTube channel is just because a stock is cheap doesn't mean that it has to recover or that it can't sell off anymore, right? How many of you guys watching this video right now have bought the dip on a stock and it just continues to sell off, right? It's one of the worst feelings. So what I decided to do the day that I made that video is actually during the aftermarket hours. Um, and I want, I'm gonna show you all of my entries and all of my exits for this successful trade. As it sold off, I bought a little bit over $10,000, which is about a 10% position size. This is all relative to what you're trading. So if you're, you know, if your account or your position size is $1,000, that would be like you buying one share of this company, right? Buying $100. You're buying one tenth. So I intended to invest $100,000 into Peloton. That's me being fully invested in Peloton. And as Peloton began to trade around $95 to $97, I found Peloton to be attractive, but because it still can sell off, I still managed my position size. And instead of buying $100,000, I only bought $10,000. And because it can still sell off. So I want to show you that very quickly. We go on over to my Fidelity account. And one of the first positions that you can see that I took is um, on the 10th. Um, we can see right on over here. So Peloton, I bought 110 shares at $97.50. So not bad, right? $97.50. The next day, again, if this is like best case scenario. Um, I'm going to talk about the good and the bad within this swing trade. The next day, Peloton breaks above EMA. It just begins to break out. And it begins to indicate signs of an uptrend. And a lot of different stocks begin to do this, right? So it actually begins to indicate signs of an uptrend. I'm like, dope, right? You know, it's actually indicating signs of an uptrend. This doesn't ever really happen to me where, you know, I buy the dip and then it just begins to recover right away. This, that, that mindset of like, dang, I should have bought more, right? So I begin to, right, as this thing begins to recover and indicate signs of recovery, it's showing signs of growth. And going back to the idea of the three stages of reversal, I don't want to aggressively buy during the rejection phase. I don't want to aggressively buy during the consolidation phase. You know, I might buy a little bit just to have some skin in the game, but I want to buy during the confirmation. This is the three stages of a reversal. If you guys want to download this free PDF, we made it free for you. It's down in the description. It's the first link down below. So I hope that you enjoy it. Um, but again, like I don't want to buy aggressively when it's selling off because I don't want to add fuel to a fire that's just specifically losing me money, right? So once it actually begins to recover, that's when I actually begin to step on the gas. And I wanted to show you guys 
what, what this looks like. So this was my first buy, right? This was on the uh, 8th. So the 8th and then the settlement date was on the 10th. But um, I bought $10,725 worth of it. So 110 shares, right? Very simple. It began to indicate signs of an uptrend. I don't know why they're all spread out, but this one shows that I bought 300 shares at 106.90, but my actual second entry was this one. This one shows, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see which one it is. Uh, this one. I bought another 100 shares at 101. So as soon as it broke above 100 and uh, $100 a share, it began to trade at 101. Guess what? I had another $100 to my position size. And then it continued and continued to indicate signs of an uptrend. So this is what I want to show you because, again, you guys can see the number of my buy orders. My buy order, buy order, buy order, buy order, buy order. So a total of five buy orders, right? And then it's just a total of three sells. So bought, bought, bought. And again, as it continued to indicate signs of an uptrend, right? We broke above one at 100. I, I viewed that to be a milestone. Added 100 shares, right? Another $10,000. It began to indicate uh, more signs of an uptrend. Then again, we broke above 106. That was a previous support level added another 300 shares. So that was another $30,000. It just continued and continued to indicate signs of an uptrend. The last one that I had, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, was 200 shares at 108. So at 108 was my last entry, which is right around this general area, which is again, it's pushed up already quite a bit, right? So from when I originally bought it, so I bought at 97.50 to be exact, it pushed up and indicated signs of an uptrend. It was already up 11% from when I bought it, but I bought an additional 200 shares. Why? Why am I adding more? Well, I viewed the resistance level to be right around the SMA line, around that general area. And although it is a little bit more on the overbought side, I still saw there to be upside potential. And most importantly, I added more when the direction was in my favor. There was still a lot of momentum within those past couple of days. And you can see that on the five day, five minute chart, it was just consistently and consistently bullish. So as we broke above that 108, again, I really didn't hesitate the next day to add more to my position size and it just continued and continued to indicate signs of an uptrend. So when was it that I was like, okay, I need to start loading off on my position? Well, it was when this thing actually began to surpass my expectation, right? We all have this goal of, of what we're trying to make. And sometimes it's difficult to stay true to that goal when things are, are going very well, right? How many of you guys sometimes hesitate to lock in profits when the stock just keeps pushing? Trust me, I get it. It's exciting. But I try to catch myself right away. Anytime I get too emotional, anytime that I get too excited, that's a huge red flag for me, right? Emotions are not something that I take easy in the market. As soon as I begin to get too excited, I hold myself back and remind myself, that it's all about opportunity, it's all about calculated risk. And as soon as we begin to trade above the SMA line, this is when I begin to say that, okay, you know, I'm gonna begin to slowly load off on my position after I lock in a majority of my profits. And um, I can actually even show you on the, I just wanna show you on the big charts on why I was doing it, but it was actually uh, right around 114. Again, if you guys watched my previous video, I talked about uh, a little bit, uh, my first big sell on PTON, and I believe it was this big order, yeah. So this big order, this is PTON, I sold $68,000 of it. So this was 600 shares. I sold it at 114.20, 68,000 my fees, right? And then the settlement date. So $68,000 worth of it, right? And then it continued to indicate signs of an uptrend. I sold another 150 shares. This was at 116.43, so not too bad, right? And then my last sell was right around 117.39. So if you do the math, I still have about 100 shares left of PTON. So I sold the majority of my shares on average from 114 to highs of 117. And if you look at it, was it a perfect exit? Well, no, because Peloton hit highs of 118. But one of the things that I want to share with you is like, you can see from a lot, and, and this is the whole reason I'm making this video, you can see from when I bought Peloton, and when I sold Peloton, my entries and my exits were not perfect. I didn't buy $100,000 worth of it, or I didn't have to buy $100,000 worth of it at $97, because I didn't know that it was gonna begin to indicate signs of an uptrend the next day. I put some money in it to have some skin in the game, so if it did begin to indicate signs of an uptrend, I can add more. But if it continued to sell off, I wouldn't be 
or become an emotional mess, right? So there's a, a balance there. And then once that direction began to be in my favor, I began to add more to my position size as long as the direction continued to remain bullish, right? So if we were to indicate signs of a pullback, I would have had to slow down and not have added as much. But because it went so well with the, with the overall stock being so bullish, I just continued and continued to add more up to a certain point where I was invested with about $93,000. But then it came to the realization that, hey, we're approaching this SMA line. This was a previous resistance level. It doesn't matter how much more money I potentially want to make. I need to stick to what's important, and that's the numbers and the opportunity and the calculated risk. So as we broke above that, I did not hesitate to lock in profits at 114, right? I sold half of my position or more than half of my position there. I sold 600 shares. It broke above 116, sold another 100 shares. Broke above 117, sold another 100 shares, right? And these are the shares that you see right on over here, where I sold at 114, 116, and then the 117. So my, my swing trade was nothing close to being perfect, but it was the concept of taking advantage of an opportunity that made sense to me. And once I got that confirmation, I stepped on the gas. And most importantly, I was not afraid to lock in profits at overbought levels, looking at the RSI, looking at the MACD, looking at previous resistance levels, because I knew that although things are going well now, it doesn't mean that the stock has to hold up here because it, it gapped up if you look at it. From the overall lows to the overall highs, it gapped up over 20% in just three to four days. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And again, this isn't something that happens all the time. So because of that, I tried to stay realistic. Although I had a goal of making, you know, 20%. If you actually do the math with what I walked away with, right? If you guys, um, you know, and this is what I wanted to show you. On Friday, I had a $29,000 day. And a lot of people thought that all of that was just AMC right? But a big portion of that was Peloton. And when it comes down to Peloton on my overall closed positions for the year, you know, I haven't done too bad. Half of my trades were, you know, really done this past week, as you can see right on over here. We're up $16,000 on PTON. And that's the beautiful thing about a swing trade is you really need to take into consideration when it makes the most sense to begin to buy in. It's not that, oh, I need to make 20%. It's like, it's good to have a goal. But to buy the dip aggressively when the stock is still selling off, that's very naive, right? Because you're only adding fuel to a fire, something that's losing you money. And during consolidation, yeah, you know, you might want to have some skin in the game if you know how to manage risk. But it can still sell off from here, so make sure you take that into consideration. But it's when that direction really began to be in my favor, that I really began to step on the gas. And that's why it's so important to understand the three stages of a reversal. I saw the opportunity based off of poor earnings and it began to sell off. So it was at a price point that I found to be attractive. I bought 10% of it. I added 10% more when it indicated signs of an uptrend and traded above EMA. I added more once it continued to make higher highs. And then I added my final once we're at an overbought level or we're overbought enough that it just made sense to prepare to begin to sell as we broke above SMA. I did a great job taking advantage of an opportunity and stepping on the gas when the direction was in my favor. And I feel like, in my opinion, I did a pretty decent job locking in profits. Did I buy at the perfect time? Did I sell at the perfect time? No, my, my entry was not at the lowest point and my exit was not at the highest point. So it's not about being a perfect trader, but working towards becoming as close to perfect as possible in the idea of making sure there's a reason behind everything that you do. Not, not based off of emotion, but based off of logic. So I just wanted to uh, share my swing trade with you guys. I know we've had a really big focus on AMC and all the success that we've had with that one. And it's been absolutely amazing to see you know people do very well with day trades. But one of the things that I really enjoy is especially for swing trades like this, trades that you know are of quality companies, you know, for people that have full-time jobs, for people that, you know, um, are full-time students, you don't need to be watching the market every minute of the day. We've done this with Amazon. Look at my video a couple days ago. You know, we bought the dip on Amazon and sold the highs. We've done this with multiple different stocks. Spotify, right? You don't need to do this with momentum stocks or anything like that. How many of you guys use Spotify? I made a video about Spotify when it reported earnings and it sold off, right? We bought the dip 
and as it began to indicate signs of an uptrend, we added a little bit more, and then we locked in profits when it pushed up. And even on Spotify, right, from lows to overall highs, $24,000, uh, 24%. So yes, it's exciting to day trade stocks. They're a high risk, they're a high reward. But if you're not finding success with that, then maybe focusing a little bit more on quality companies and really allowing an opportunity to present itself and knowing when to take advantage of it, when to step on the gas, and knowing when to lock in profits. It's so, so important. And this is why we always talk about the three stages of a reversal. So I uh, just wanted to break down my swing trade for you guys on P2N. Let me know in the comment section if you found this video helpful. I don't normally always make videos like this, but I thought that this one would be a little bit more useful to try to encourage people instead of day trading so much, maybe transition into investing or swing trading can be something that might be more up your alley or lifestyle depending on your work or school schedule. So again, the three stages of a reversal PDF will be provided for you in the first link in the description. And we break things down like this all the time within our live trading videos. And if you want the ability to be able to watch me trade live every single day, then again, click the second link down below and that will give you access to our Learn Plan Prof group. And if you want to join us at Market Open, uh, then make sure that you join and I'll see you on Monday, which is tomorrow at Market Open. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you guys have any questions, please make sure you comment them down below. And friendly reminder, if you guys are trying to pimp out your trading station, we have some of the top selling trading mouse pads in the market. And that's that third link in the description. So again, I really do appreciate you guys' time. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.